One, two, three, four. When I turn my radio dial, I hear it's pop country. country. Oh, corporate jerk, sure, get on my nerves. That ain't country to me. Now it burns when I pee. It burns when I pee. That's what Nashville did to me. So let's take a piss on the Nashville music fest. Cause now it burns when I Alrighty, everybody, welcome to the IBWIP studios and another in-studio interview we have with us tonight, Filthy Still. You're supposed to clap. And our in-house audience. Um, so I guess if, and I'm going to introduce everybody. This is Jesse, this is Matt. Matt, Jeremy, and Guido. Sorry about that. Um, we just got down here and played some songs, and uh, they're in town. First, I want to, Jesse, we'll give you the first question if you want. Um, how did you guys get hooked up with Farmageddon Records? Um, well, we heard about them through the goddamn Gallows, and we were interested in their what they were doing and all their different music, Jake Orvis and stuff. And we kind of just hoped someday we would get on there. And we ended up going down to Muddy Roots and playing. We weren't even on the bill. We just kind of showed up and played. And uh, Darren saw it there, I believe, and got more interested. And then we went through Texas, where he was living at the time, on that same tour and hung out with him and made it official. That's pretty much how it happened. And it's definitely, I, what I've noticed from Farmageddon is it's very family-oriented. Everybody kind of sticks together. Yeah. And, you know, obviously I think that it turns into when you guys are on tour and stuff, there's always people that can help you out using Farmageddon oh, kind of yeah. as a connection. That was the, one of the best connections we had. So another question I have is, what do you think the allure is of the punk influence in you know, the Roots music now, whoever wants to answer? Because <laughs> there's obviously... What was the question? Just the, the, the allure of punk influence in Roots music now. I mean, you can tell there's a lot of punk influence in, in the Roots music, and I just 
where do you think that comes from in regards to, you know, a lot of punk bands end up, you know, doing something different and going into Roots, or where do you think that connection comes in? Uh, for me, I was like, I grew up in East Tennessee, and uh, you see all these guys playing, like, just on their porch, and sort of everyone comes out and just has a good time, and it's not really about, you know, making a million dollars. They're just doing it because they love it, you know, and you don't have to be the best at it. You just, like, do it because your friends are doing it, and it's what you do for a good time, and that's what punk rock was when I was younger, you know. It's like right, we it's definitely the weren't the best musicians out there, you know, but it was fun to <laughs> They were doing it because of the music. Play. You know, that's kind of how the punk originated in the first place. Was, yeah, just you know. friends having a good time, and that's sort of what the Roots music was, and, you know, sort of. I mean, that's one aspect of it. There's a lot of aspects of it, so I don't know. So you you've had aspects of it, Jeremy. Uh, I have a little point. Uh, shit. What was I gonna say? Um, also, drinking, drinking songs. Like, you know, sure. like a lot of old, I don't know, like like punks like to drink and party, and we do right. too. And country, old country drinking songs. There I you guess. go. I don't know if that. <laughs> I never really thought about that till now, but I'm kind of proud of myself. But. So you've had All a right. few different lineups, you know, since the band started. What's the most difficult part of you know, kind of keeping a band together and does it make a difference maintaining the filthy still sound when you have to, with the different lineup changes? This question is this. Here, let me ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's difficult. We, we've gone through a, a f- yeah, I mean, it's always been uh, me, Jesse, and Jeremy um, since the beginning. I mean, it's we've gone through a lot of lineup changes. We lost our, our washboard player. He was a good friend of ours who passed away a, a few years ago. And, I mean, he used to, he played washboard and did sort of black metal style vocals, which was a big part of our sound at that time. And, I mean, it's something we never really regained in our sound. And, I mean, we've gone through quite a few bass players, too. I mean, we had our original bass player, Mike, for a couple of weeks, and who played a sort of similar bass to Artie, who was our next bass player, who played this homemade upright washtub bass. And then we went, uh, we got Liz and Jared with us, and then we had Liz on the fiddle, which was amazing. Not having her now is, like, sort of taken away from our sound, we feel, because we're used to having her, but, I mean, it's tough to maintain the sound, but we do what we can. We add more instruments. And sure, and, SP, and when you lose and when you gain different stuff, it does kind of, it keeps you guys fresh in the fact that you do have different sounds, you're not just maintaining one sound all the way through. Yeah, exactly. So, where do you guys envision Filthy Still in five years? Five years. Oh. <laughs> Shit, wow. Um, that's a hard question to answer, but... Uh, I don't make easy... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> rehab or jail or... Uh, hopefully not touring. in the ground. <laughs> touring, yeah. I'd, I'd just say, like, touring. Like, that's how I'd want it to be, you know. Just We've been constantly touring pretty much for about... Almost two years now. We know bands have been touring for, you know, six, seven, eight years, you know. Yeah, so we're just trying to pay our dues. dues, uh, We're starting to get better, like, we're establishing fan bases in different spots in the country, which has been really good. And, uh, And, you know, speaking of touring, you know, with most Roots bands, you guys are just constantly touring. You know, are you guys making a profit, or are you guys just kind of getting from town to town? I mean, I know it's kind of a weird odd question but yeah. i guess you know I, I understand that you know like you said you know you guys aren't in this to make millions and millions of dollars no. but you know being on the road constantly i mean is there is there a, at the end of a tour is there a reward at the end of the tour it's besides usually, just hanging out and it's you know. usually a reward usually there's a little bit of a reward of some sort but uh this tour's been getting better yeah it's been more and more every time like, our first few we just break even and we now we come home with a little bit too. I mean, in the early days. Yeah, I love breakdowns. And yeah, we stuff. break down a lot and this and that. It's It seems like a constant struggle. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, another thing, like, I always think of is, like, playing, like, people work all year, you know, to go out and, like, go on vacation, you know, for two weeks. And, like, they got to work real hard and do all that, you know, and, like, we get to sort of have a vacation all year you know <laughs> right and you know and we, see different things yeah and, but you know we got a lot of sacrifices too that we have to put up and 
you know, sleeping in a freezing cold van or, yeah, you know, putting up, day, yeah, loading. and it's, you know, it's, it's not easy. Yeah, it's not it's easy. Fun. It's a fun job, but it's not an easy job. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's cool though. There's a lot, a lot of rewards, and they're not. It's not money, you know, right. all the time. It's yeah. it's the friendship and all the things that get to happen. We get to you know witness on the road. Right. So. And that was kind of the hope and the point that I was hoping to get to. Right. It's that more about the experience. It's the experience. You know, like the people we meet and like lifelong friends. Out. The life. That's worth no money. Like, right. That's worth exactly more than any money. You know. <laughs> <laughs> It's a waste of time. <laughs> so one of the questions I had was, I, I asked you guys to play dinosaur shit, and I was just really curious. I, I really was intrigued by the song. And so um, I was just curious of how that song came to be. Um, basically one day I was walking my dog around the block. Back home I got a dog named Ozzy, Golden Retriever, and walking him around the block. And... Um, he stopped and took a dump on some guy's lawn who always got angry, you know, and it's like, I don't really feel like picking up the shit, cause, huh? I don't like to do it, I don't know. <laughs> but, so I'm thinking, like, what does he care? The whole world is made of dinosaur shit anyway, you know, thinking the ground is somewhat composed of it. <laughs> and so I was thinking, about, that's a good idea for a song, and I just got home and, like, wrote it out in five or ten minutes. But... See, song songs can come from anywhere. Yeah. Even when you're walking yeah, walking your dog. I have actually another song that came from right and uh, it's not out yet, but it's another one about my dog shit on someone's lawn <laughs> too, so I guess I have a co- <laughs> an interest in that or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh Guido, this one's for you. Um as a member of Cutthroat Shamrock, how did you get hooked up with the band? Um uh, we know we talked about this a little bit before, but just how did you get hooked up with the band to go on this tour? Uh well Cutthroat's been around a little bit longer. Actually, this uh, this uh, March 17th will be like our our 10th year of being a band and playing shows and stuff. But uh, out there on the road, like you meet all these people and become friends with them, and like these guys are probably like my top five bands that like I became friends with and really enjoyed their music over like the last 10 years, you know. And uh, I was. <laughs> and we'll pause for a group hug. <laughs> but uh, we. Uh, I don't know, I just, uh, Cutthroat, like I said, it's coming up on like 10 years, and we're going to have an album come out in June, and uh, we decided to tour real hard for June, July, and August, and just, and from there on out, maybe, you know, so uh, we sort of took off beforehand a little bit, and uh, I don't have a whole lot going on at home, you know, so I sort of made my life so I can leave, you know, a lot, right. and uh, I, you know, I was just going to travel around until then, and these guys needed a bass player, so it was like perfect for me to just jump awesome. in with them and stuff. But awesome. uh, and I just met them on the road and became friends with them, playing yeah. shows. Both of our bands are touring constantly and running across each other. So. Crisscrossing paths. And yeah. yeah. Oh, we just yeah. played there the other day. Exactly. Yeah. But, uh, that's that. Awesome. So, Jesse, the, the Filthy Stills kind of started as a solo act, I guess, yeah. originally. You know, how did it kind of turn into a band? Going from you, you know. All right. Uh, basically, what happened was we were, me and my friend Mark Leonard and uh, our buddy Dylan, who passed away, he was talking about before. We got in a Corolla and we went on tour, which was mostly like house parties and barbecues and little little tiny things. Like Big people's bars. living rooms? Yeah, people's <laughs> living rooms a lot of times. Not as nice living rooms as this. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, we just keep traveling like that, or we were traveling doing that, and uh, came back home. And while we were doing that, I had him start playing washboard. I had a little mandolin banjo that I would play, and I made my friend Mark start playing guitar. So it was a band like that, kind of. But it was always revolving members at that point. And then when I got home, I knew Matt from punk bands we were in when we were kids and stuff. So we got Matt to start playing whatever. He got a banjo for Christmas, I think, or something. And, uh... Yeah, basically we started playing together. We found Jeremy also through Dylan, who, uh, yeah, he actually made us all kind of come together. But uh, just with each yeah. passing year, it just kind of grew into Yeah, it just keeps more growing, more. you know, yeah, just, meet more people. I mean, we could, uh, we're could. we always open to ideas of other members jumping up and playing yeah. with us too all the time, a lot of our buddies. <laughs> I'll flash it on the screen. <laughs> So this is kind of a question for everybody. I, I, I kind of, and it's 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 a broad question, uh, but hopefully, you know, it makes sense. Is why music? Why make that life choice? It's the only thing I want to do with my life. I don't know. It's just yeah, it's what I want to do. I just knew it when I was younger, and I was I was in punk bands. I wasn't very good, but I was like, 
not good, but I still want to do this. Like, and uh, yeah. just keep trying and yeah. keep doing it. And, uh, I'm just uh, pretty much completely screwed without it, you know. It's like I, I, I didn't have a job for a long time, you know what I mean? Doing absolutely nothing. Music was the only thing I was really interested in. I was always just passionate about it. I always wanted to do, you know, the music thing. I never really thought that I'd actually we'd get to do it, you know, this seriously. So <coughs> this is pretty crazy. But it was like, without this, there's, you know, I'd be doing stuff. I'm delivering pizzas or something, <laughs> you know, just right. nothing. I didn't go to college or anything like that. I got a GED. So. <laughs> Yeah, like, well, after, like, meeting bands like the Goddamn Gallows, I could have known those guys for some years now, like, just very inspiring to see what they're doing, like, working so hard on the road, and I just love music, and I just wanted to make that lifestyle, so worked a few years just to get it out there, and then, uh, now we're just on the road constantly, you know? So. Awesome. How about you, Guido? I, I don't know, just, I just <laughs> fell in love with it, you know, playing music. Like I said, starting out in punk bands, I sort of have the same background as these guys, you know. And just had a lot of fun with my friends and stuff, and, you know, the folk music, like, I really dig that, and it really kept me interested because people get to, like, you know, just play, you know, wherever you want acoustically, and there's those late-night sessions when you're up, like, you know, we rolled in, to, today we were, we were bitching about being up at 6 o'clock this morning <laughs> right. playing music, you know, and I mean, that's that's what makes me fall in love with it is just like all the friendship and not only the on stage stuff but like the afterwards the right. late hours and early in the morning jam sessions that cuz it is it is definitely a lifestyle that not is for it's not for everybody you know what i mean yeah. and and like you said you guys don't have these luxurious tour buses that you're you know you got a kitchenette and you know great bunk beds and stuff so it's definitely i mean I commend you guys because I I don't think I could do it. You know what I mean? But it takes it, it definitely shows that it takes a uh, a special person that and music has to be a very passionate thing to yeah, be able to make that sacrifice because you're making family sacrifices, you make lifestyle sacrifices. You kind of just got to cross that line in your head, like accept the fact that you might go a couple of weeks without a shower and sleep on the floor every night. But once you get past that, it's really you get used to it. And it becomes like second nature. Everything is and and you know a lot of highs, lot of lot of highs and lows. Right. Yeah, like one night you'll be sleeping on. <laughs> Like a bathroom floor. The next, <laughs> next you'll be like partying with really cool people. <laughs> I don't know. You there's, know I mean. there's, yeah, there's a big difference yeah. between <laughs> passed out. You know, bring sleeping sleeping bag, bring a sleeping bag. <laughs> yeah, so we all have sleeping bags and Just all that learn, good stuff. Learn what you need to, you know. Sure. Be happy and comfortable on the road within reason. And like you've said, it, as each tour grows, I mean, yeah. it gets a little bit easier and everything goes a little bit smoother and it's not as yeah, rough yeah. as those first exactly. couple. Exactly. The booking gets easier because that's a big process alone. People, you know, it's like the fact we don't have to sleep in the van. Right. The first couple of tours, we were sleeping in the van a lot, but now we're at the point where we've slept in the van the whole last tour we did. We yeah, we know it's, we met once. so many great, amazing <laughs> people on the road. <laughs> yeah, I still sleep in it just because that's like, a different kind of sleep. That's yeah. like that's out of necessity. Not like oh, we left the bar at two in the morning, let's go find a truck stop and sleep in the van. You know, it's, right. That's so what is the spring and summer look like for Filthy Still? What's well, what's actually, the plan? This spring we're uh, hitting Europe for the very first time. Very excited about that, and uh, I think we leave in uh, April, April 9th, like something like that. <laughs> and then the summer we got Farmageddon Fest to look forward to that our label puts on, and that's going to be just going to be touring the whole time. Are you guys excited about the European tour? Have you ever been to Europe? Uh, yeah. No, I went to England once, but never. To, uh, and there's a lot more to that than just you know booking gigs. I mean, you've got you've got trans you know, you know the the hall over there and the hall back, and then there's all a lot of red tape, of course, oh, yeah. to get overseas. So yep. that's definitely difficult, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll figure it. We're going with the flow. Hopefully it's one of the highs, not the lows. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I want to play a game that everybody that listens to IBWIP hates, but we play it anyway, and it's called Word Association. Mel, you love Word Association? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, so I'm just going to give you a word and just tell me the first thing that comes to mind. And Jesse, you can go first. <laughs> Green corn. Beer. <laughs> All right, I'll do another one. <laughs> um, yellow corn. <laughs> I just find uh, green corn was the Amish word for pot. I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. So, 
Mm. So now that's your guys can be your code word. Now if I need to find some in Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and like I said, I didn't choose person, so you got the mic next. So what's the first thing that comes to mind when uh, Brokeback Mountain? <laughs> 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 um, I have to say, gay cowboys. <laughs> These all do have eating pudding. They do have. Maybe? They do intertwine with something. So, oh, <laughs> but you won't find out at the end of this. But they do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jeremy, get the last one. Donkey punch. Coconut water. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, guys. Thank you very much for for coming and playing some shows. <laughs> Guido's like, I know this is going to be bad at the end. I'll just I only in. picked out three. So, but I want to thank you guys for coming by and playing some songs. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing you play live tonight. Very hydrating coconut water. I've been drinking it every day, just so you know. You know, I drink it on tour. It hydrates you. So I was just, I was just thinking of that. I didn't want anyone to think I'm weird. So. All right. All right. We should take the mic from you. All right. Thanks a lot, guys, and uh, you're welcome back anytime. Hey, thanks for having us. The song is called Dinosaur Shit. Well, the earth is made of dinosaur shit. We're all a bunch of monkeys just dance around on it Ain't got nowhere to go except for down below They'll dig you up in a million years and put your bones on toe And the race of warrior dolphins want to know Where do the humans go? If you went back in a time machine A dinosaur would eat you and you'd die and you would scream It wouldn't be so sweet when they were chewing on your meat Become part of that dinosaur dung from underneath our feet. May find that fact disgusting, but I think it's kind of neat. Cause the earth is made of dinosaur shit. We're all a bunch of monkeys just dance around on it. And I know where to go, except for down below. Yeah, they get up in a million years to put your bones on show. The race of warrior doctors want to know where do the beds go? Napalm, bombs, tanks and RPGs All the stuff we've come up with blow each other to smithereens We out steal and lie, get a piece of the pie And if you've got something I want, then I guess you gotta die That's just the way it goes, don't ask me why Cause the earth is made of dinosaur shit We're all a bunch of monkeys just dance around on it Except for Namla, they'll eat you up in a million years and put your bones on show. And the race of warrior dolphins want to know where did the beds go? Next time your life gets hard, take a look out of the window into your backyard. It's down on you, skull, but he ain't there no more. And neither will your damn old screw, no, that you can be sure. That's gonna go, my friend, to a dinosaur. Cause the earth is made of dinosaur shit. We're all a bunch of monkeys just to dance around on it. Got no word to go. Except for them love They'll leave you up in a million years And put your bones on show The race for your dolphins want to have Where do the humans go? And the giant mutant cocks want to have Where do the humans go? And whoever ends up 